Welcome, Bobcats, to another edition of From the Field to the Fans. I'm your host, Otis Evergirl, and with me, I have Keeson Ramirez. Man, you, uh, you you recovered from Tuesday's game yet, or you, 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 feel, you feeling better? Yesterday was rough. Today, two days removed. I'm in a better spot. I can't imagine what it means to be a part of the team, because I imagine they took it a lot harder than I did, but just a, just a rough performance for the Bobcats. Yeah, well, you know, Kansas City's in the World Series. They won a, a Wednesday night, swept... Uh, so who they sweep? Um, the uh, uh, Baltimore Orioles. Baltimore Orioles. Oh man, I, I, I they went totally through the didn't. Orioles, the Angels, the Athletics. They're not losing a game this postseason. <laughs> just mark it down. <laughs> well, a team that's taking a lot of L's right now is the Texas State football team. Uh, man, they struggled. ESPN two. Uh, Tuesday night against Louisiana Lafayette, the Ragin' Cajuns. Uh, headline for the paper, very proud of it. Cajuns too hot to handle, and seriously, they were. I mean, um, Terrence Broadway, 14 of 21, 225 yards, a touchdown interception, but 19 carries for 113 yards. Elijah McGuire, um, eight, eight rushes for 64 yards on the ground. A little bit below his average of 66 yards per game, but he had four receptions, 85 yards, 62-yard touchdown reception of the second play of the game. Uh, huge momentum for uh, for Lafayette, especially on the road. Then you look at Tyler Jones and the Bobcats, 14 of 23, 176 yards, touchdown interception, uh, 16 rushes for 11 yards. Terrence Franks, 30 yards rushing. Robert Lowe, 36 yards rushing. 94 total yards for the Bobcats. Uh, that's not the recipe for success, and 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 it showed Tuesday um, on ESPN two. They allowed a season high 528 yards uh, to to Louisiana Lafayette, almost double what they had. Um, 21 minutes of time possession. They only ran 58 plays. Uh, a lot of Tyler Jones' stats were in garbage time when they were already losing by 31 points. And you look at it, Bryce Gunner's touchdown with one minute to go. Uh, just gas defense. And Louisiana Lafayette already knew they were going to win. Uh, not, a, not, a, not a good performance for Tyler Jones. Not a good performance from the running game. Uh, bad performance from the offensive line. They didn't really create any holes that Franks and Lowe could really capitalize on. Uh, defense was shaky. They really struggled against Terrence Broadway in the in the run game and in the pass game. And overall, there was not a single positive that you can really glean from this. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, and we'll talk about this later, How what they take from this game, if any. Uh, you know, This game was, was embarrassing for the Bobcats, embarrassing on Tuesday night. The offensive line could get no protection. Defensive line could get, couldn't get to the quarterback. And, you know, every run play came out of the read option and I'm thinking to myself watching the game what well, what offense does Texas State run primarily the read option I mean you have an athletic quarterback you have Robert Lowe Terrence Gay all these guys in the backfield but yet the defense could not stop the read option that night um, and, it, and it was surprising to me Lafayette could stop it because they see it all the time Texas State couldn't stop it and they see it all the time so you know you're thinking to yourself as a as a as a um, um as a journalist, a person of the media, I'm, I'm sure fans are thinking to themselves like, wow, like this is what they practice against every week. So why is it so hard for them to stop? Uh, I think Coach Fran, I love the man, but he got out coached. He got out coached Tuesday. You could see it in every aspect of the game. He got out coached offensively, defensively, special teams. I thought, um, you know, last year when they played Lafayette, the one thing that everyone talked about was how much of a difference it was on the offensive and defensive lines. I mean, Lafayette had grown men on their offensive and defensive line. You could still tell Texas State was transitioning still. Last night, you could tell Texas State was still transitioning. I mean, it was it was not pretty to see. I mean, it still looked like Lafayette is head and shoulders above from Texas State. And I'm not parsing any words here because I, I think to be on national television like that, coaches writing letters, fans active on Twitter, fans showing up to the game, 18,500 18, is pathetic. Um, I still think alumni should still show up. I still think more people should show up to the game Tuesday night, tell them what San Marcos is about. But I understand where their frustration comes from when your football team doesn't show up in the biggest of games. For me, you look at it, beat Idaho, beat Tulsa, two steps forward this game three steps back probably four steps back a uh, major decline in everything that we've seen um they just across the board it just was not good and it seemed like it was just a passive game plan from the start uh halftime they had about a minute 30 seconds and they had three timeouts decided not to utilize it kind of run going in the half down 18 maybe a questionable decision you want to take some risk when you're already at down 18 at home national television uh second half 
Texas State of old. Uh, short passes, really not a lot of offense, not a lot of taking chances. Uh, Tyler Jones didn't stretch the field. Rob Love, Franks didn't get anything done. And Fran seemed really content to give him the ball up the middle and hope something happens. But for 58 minutes, that didn't happen. And you would have liked to see them at least, you know, give Louisiana Lafayette some havoc or give them something to think about. But the whole game, they were just playing safe, passive football. And then in the end, that was uh, that was their downfall. Yeah, slant, screens, and hitches. Oh, my. <laughs> that's, that's what you kept telling yourself on Tuesday. Ted Cruz would have been proud of the play calling. Uh, that Fran had. I'm dead serious. I mean, that was conservative. I haven't seen that play calling since for, for you know, since last year. You know, they talked a big game, open up the offense, running the ball, doing all this stuff, and then Lafayette, it just seemed like they reverted back to old ways. You know, the game plan, a lot of people are questioning, why are you not going downfield? You know, and now we're coming down to the key plays. Um, I completely agree with you. When you have a minute 30 left, you don't let the other team take the delay of game penalty and run the clock down all the way 40 seconds. There's some risk involved, but you have to take you the risk. You have to take the – you're at home. It's Tuesday. It's ESPN2. You know, this big game that everyone's talking, you have to take – you have to be aggressive with it because you never know what's going to come out. You're probably down 21-10, you know, not looking at it 20 three because when you say things like that in my opinions that means you have no faith in your defense or you have no faith in your team that's what it looks like to to a lot of people when you say things like that you have to be aggressive in that situation because now you're de- let's say you score let's say you get a field goal you're down 21 six you uh i believe texas state got the ball too yeah got the, to, the- to start the half so then you go so at worst you get a field goal then let's say you get a touchdown you're down 21 13 that's a one possession ball game you get the ball back you don't move the ball they go up 28 3 and everyone's left I mean that which that's they already you, did anyway. You got to you got to take that chance. You know you have to take that chance. So that one there and three timeouts, three timeouts left in the back pocket. I mean, you're, you're thinking to yourself, you're saying what? What's the what's the thought process? They had what ten games to ten, ten days, excuse me, to prepare for this. Ten days. Uh, you know, you, a lot of people are looking at Fran and saying, "What?" I mean, it's almost like you, earlier in the season you took like 50 steps forward and then now slowly it's like you're taking 60 70 steps back you're you're just wondering to yourself as a fan and as a person that follows the team closely like what's going on in practice are the players not as focused as, are they not paying attention to details and the game plan and the other key to me for the game was good lord i hope for the next 11 days before they play monroe they work on basics of tackling because elijah mcguire and terrence broadway looked like they were playing nba street ball out there I mean, the ankles that were broken time after time after time. You're, it's almost like the defense was defeated, you know. So, you know, hopefully they hopefully they figure it out. And those, those are kind of my keys of the game. To be fair, he kind of faked me out, too, in the press box with his read options. He's kind of deceptive. Uh, one of the key plays, or at least two of them, were uh, Christian Ringo's fumble return, 41 yards, touchdown. Uh, it was 7-3 to three after the second play of the, the game resulted in a touchdown. Texas State held him four consecutive possessions to no points. Then the fumble broke the game open. Tyler Jones kind of lost his mojo, whatever he had left. Um, and then they kind of just, you know, took that momentum from there. Uh, the second play that I'd like to focus on was uh, David Mayo's forced fumble. That wasn't a forced fumble. Uh, down the sideline, right sideline, Terrence Broadway, right. he stripped him with his left hand. Ball kind of tiptoed on the tiptoed on the edge for a little bit. Jamad Williams picked it up. Really pivotal play. Could have maybe, you know, gave Texas State something to latch on to. Uh, they confirmed it, and they said it wasn't a fumble. It was out of bounds. So that was a potential swing play that didn't happen. Yeah, and that play shouldn't have been confirmed. They should have just said the play stands uh, to confirm it. That was kind of tricky. Um, you know, but 94 total yards rushing, not Texas State's game plan. They're a run-first team. I thought – uh, um, Terrence Franks, you know, it's hard to sit a guy that got 95, 70, 70 yard touchdown runs, you know, in one game. But Rob Lowe, I feel, is that first down back who gets five to six yards. And then once he starts getting that rhythm going, you see him go for the 15, the 12, the now he's getting you in first down. Now the play action, the misdirection is all put together. And Terrence Franks is a great two back who gives you great uh, deception and, and misdirection there of his own. So I thought they should have stuck with Rob Lowe a little bit um, and not just stick with Terrence Franks but Bryce Gunner you know he's the guy that I've been hammering from 
uh, for the past uh, year now. Uh, the man, he is a man. He is a big, big, nice big little guy. double move yeah, on the touchdown. Had, yep, on the touchdown late, and I give him the game ball. He's starting to grow up. You can see the route progression. You can see him blocking downfield. You can see that he's starting to, you know, make the moves and stuff like that. So that's always good. But for him, two, uh, two receptions, fifty yards, and a touchdown. He had a thirty-three yard touchdown with his high school quarterback Stevensville. So from the state champions, and so. Uh, that's who I'm giving the game ball to because you can see the improvement in Bryce Gunter. <laughs> My game ball and kind of indicative of how bad this game was for Texas State, uh, Will Johnson, the punter yeah. slash kicker. Uh, eight punts, 370 yards, 46 yards per punt, uh, three inside their 20, and a f- this first punt was 58 yards. Um, that really, if you look at it, he was the defensive player of the game too because he saved a lot right. of points just by putting Louisiana Lafayette in a in a position where they had to go 80 yards to score a touchdown. And that early on played a big role when they Texas State still got their feet wet and they still had a chance. Uh, he was really, really what I saw, the only player that stepped up uh, against Lafayette. Yeah, and, and I tell you this, Texas State better figure it out quick because uh, Georgia Southern 4-0, 5-2 overall. Arkansas State 2-0, 4-2 overall. Lafayette 2-0, 3-3 overall. South Alabama 2-1, 3-2 overall. Monroe 2-1, 3-3 overall. Texas State, Troy are 1-1. Texas State 3-3, Troy 1-5. New Mexico State's 1-2, 2-5. App State, Appalachian State 0-2, 1-5 for the season. And then Idaho 0-4 in conference, 0-6 overall. And the reason I mentioned those records because that's a Sun Belt standings right now. But remember, Texas State's played Lafayette. You still have to play Georgia Southern, Arkansas State, South Alabama, and Monroe. That's four teams above Texas State right now in the standings. Yeah, the season's early, but uh, Texas State better figure it out because uh, <laughs> these games are coming up soon. And I'll tell you this, Georgia Southern is not a team to be rec- playing with. I believe they average 372 yards on the ground. Um, last time I checked, Texas State hasn't been stopping anybody on the no. ground. So um, that's a team that's going to look out for. Arkansas State with Michael Gordon, 184 yards last year, less than 20 carries average nine uh nine points nine point four nine point five yards per carry not a not a negative yard he he uh, had against Texas State last year and then South Alabama close to the wire Monroe um Tyler Jones two pick sixes inside the 20 last year uh so for me I think Texas State better figure it out otherwise it's going to be a rough rough season of the Sun Belt Halfway through the season, three and three, six games left. The way I look at it, and we already have those long, the tough competition yeah. ahead. Uh, to be a bowl eligible team, or not to be a bowl eligible team, to be a team that's worthy of actually a bowl, not just uh, eligibility, you have to win at least four of the next six, probably five of the next six to go eight and four. And you look at the schedule, you look at the way the team is constructed, the way they're going, the way everything just seems, it doesn't seem likely that they'll get that five out of six, four out of six to get there. Um, just a tough schedule rough season you had a rack priority out you defense is still getting their feet with with uh john thompson system and the offense is what it is right now and that's certainly not good as you head uh head forward yeah so bobcats better figure it out because conference play is uh conference play is near you know we talk about monroe's coming up on october 25th they're going on the road to go play those guys Man, when they have long layoffs from Pine Bluffs, it was 14 days off to Navy. They lose 21-35. Tulsa, 10 days off. They lost to Lafayette, 10-34. to They're going to have 11 days off when they play Monroe. Hopefully, Bobcats mentally can can figure it out. And hopefully, they go back to the basics, running the no huddle, opening up the offense a little bit more, defensively learning how to tackle, playing Coach Thompson's system. And I think Coach Thompson is going to have to blitz more now because I just don't think anybody other than ODR can get to the quarterback. So um, hopefully Bobcats figure it out, and hopefully this 11-day layoff against Monroe will will definitely help them out, unlike the two previous games. What you hope for from this 24-point loss, uh, and David Mayo put it post-game, was that it's a learning experience. Lafayette kind of outclassed them, and they have to use this game as a fuel for the rest of their season. If they use it in another way, it could derail the rest of their season. So it's a very pivotal point in the season where they're trying to learn from this game. And hopefully, like I said, Hopefully the Bobcats figure it out. If you have any questions for us, you can leave it at theuniversitystar.com or you can tweet us at University Star or at Ustar underscore sports using the hashtag Field2Fans. For Keith and Ramirez, I am Otis Sevagal, and like I always tell you, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>